morning to to all the year participants all the participants i welcome you all on the second day of the short term training program this is the second session it gives me immense pleasure to have dr himanshu mishra from iit dhanbad as speaker for this session welcome you sir dr himanshu bhushan mishra did his btech in electronics and telecommunication engineering from pput odisha in the year of 2019 and mtech in communication and signal processing from electronics and communication engineering department of nit raurkela in 2012 he has completed his phd in signal processing and communication networks from electrical engineering department of iit kanpur india in 2016 He has received the best Amtech award in the specialization of communication and signal processing from NIT Raurkela, India. Currently, he is working as an assistant professor in Electronics Engineering Department of IIT Dhanbad. His research interest is towards the development of signal processing algorithms for the next generation of wireless communication technologies. Currently, he has received the startup research grant. from dst sir government of india till now he has published the research papers in the following repetitive journals like ieee transaction on communication ieee transactions on signal processing physical communication etc he has also published research papers in some reputed ieee conferences like ieee global com ieee vtc and ieee conferences of signal system and computers He has also reviewed many research papers in IEEE transactions on communications, IEEE transactions on wireless communications, and Rubel conference, IEEE VTC conference, etc. It's our great pleasure to have you as speaker for this session. Over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, introduction. Uh, let me. Uh, uh, am I audible? I think. Yes, sir. You are okay, okay. clearly. So audible. my uh, slide is visible, I think, right? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. So let me first clear. Maybe some uh, some audiences may be there who uh, might have attended my uh, talk on regarding this OTFS modulation scheme. So it will be just repetition of that. So you may gain something more uh, from uh, this as uh, this new technology. So let me just say uh, inform you that this orthogonal time frequency space is a new modulation scheme. It has been developed in two thousand nineteen. the advantage of this scheme is it is very uh, very very useful for the scenario of highly time varying channel because whenever we are traveling uh, like people we are going towards a uh, bullet train concept and also uh, in a day to day life we are moving with high speed vehicles so uh, so you can uh, we can observe that uh, many times our data rate will be degrading and also we are uh, getting less reliability communication that means Uh, so whenever we are talking with somebody, then our uh, signal will be uh, there will be interruption of our uh, voice signal. So uh, that type of things can be mitigated using the uh, concept of orthogonal time frequency space. So I will tell the details on that, and also you will see that lot of challenges are there till now. Also, it is an infancy stage of uh, research. Uh, you people, some of uh, people are interested to do research on. Uh, both physical layer and mac layer uh, so they have to be they can uh, uh, they, they should understand this concept and they can apply uh, in the research so let me start first before going that so so i i would like to give some background on uh, wireless channel and concept of the inter intersymbol interference so the background is needed for those uh, for lot of uh, audiences i think so after that i will tell what is ofdm concept then there is some uh, negative points of ofdm uh, modulation scheme then we will go towards the uh, otfs system model so after that little bit on otfs what is this uh, some challenges are there i will uh, i will i will tell and some future directions i will tell that i, I will also show one of my work paper so uh, you can also follow that uh, to get lot of insights uh, into the otfs scenario so uh, let us start from the background on this so as, as all of you might be knowing that about the fading channel in wireless communication you can divide into two types that is large scale fading and small scale fading so large scale fading depends on the path loss and basically depends on the path loss and the shadowing shadowing effects you can see from the uh, 
big buildings and hills and lot of things there you will get the effect of shadowing and pathless is there uh, due to distance traveling in distance so there will be average power so basically you can tell that large scale fading is nothing but the degradation in the average power but the small scale fading see small scale fading is nothing but the instantaneous power so whenever even uh, and that the main reason of small scale fading is multi path and the uh, mobility in channel so that means well, suppose i am at uh, this place uh, even if i am uh, near to any base station still my signal strength will fluctuating so that is due to this multi path nature suppose i am moving a little bit distance so uh, still also i am getting uh, signal even if i am there close to base station still also i am getting uh, uh, fluctuation in the signal strength so uh, you can see that that is two basic things one is delay spread one is doppler spread so delay spread is generally coming due to the multi path so this delay spread is coming due to the multi path so that's why if your base station is over here when the mobile phone is here so you will receiving let us assume that you have one path line up set one path is from the detected uh, thing so you will obtain that the delay first delay is this second delay will this so what is the delay spread you can subtract the time so actually generally the roughly i am taking this subtraction of time but you will uh, set the detail in delay spread you will see the any book any wireless communication book so this is the approximation things i am just telling if the two delays are there you will get out to minus tau one but in practice there will get many delays so you can calculate using that delays the delay spread so next is doppler spread doppler spread why it will occur due to the mobility or you can tell that when uh, you are moving if the user is moving with a uh some velocity so like that here uh, you can see that this user is moving towards this direction so, so the signal is received from this base station uh, uh one is line up side one is by the reflected so reflected has an angle of theta so due to which what will happen the there is a doppler frequency will be created due to this movement so this doppler frequency depends on the carrier frequency and the velocity and the light velocity velocity of the user and the light velocity so this is this is f11 frequency another frequency is due to the angle that means this second signal has been received angle of arrival of theta so it has another uh, 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 frequency uh, doppler so what will be doppler spread then the subtraction of these two frequency f2 minus f1 so due to this doppler frequency what will happen so there is a incremental change in the carrier frequency so as a receiver when you want to uh, take some data so you need the carrier frequency when you want to decode the data you need the carrier frequency if uh, so due to the doppler what will happen the carrier frequency will be shifted so if you don't have knowledge of doppler so you cannot uh, uh, get the data and same thing in time varying concept if you, same thing will be in the time domain it will be in the uh, uh, time varying channel so this thing i told you delay spread is in uh, for case of multi path it is in time its unit is in second so here doppler spread it is in frequency it is unit is in uh, hertz so and this is the basic things of wireless channel uh, small scale fading one is due to multi path due to mobility so due to multi path so flat fading you, you we have two different types of fadings one is flat fading one is frequency selective fading so in the flat fading you will see that why flat fading occurs if the signal bandwidth is less than the channel bandwidth this is the uh, concept this uh, you, uh, you people can see from any standard wireless communication books so i'll just give you uh, uh, some points on from that so flat fading is this frequency selective fading fading when you will get and this concept will be satisfied that means basically you can tell if the symbol period is very higher than is greater than delay spread you will get flat fading if the symbol period is less than the delay spread then you will get the uh, uh, frequency selective that means delay spread the delay spread in time domain its inverse is the cha channel bandwidth the delay spread is, it, it, it will be inverse is not channel bandwidth it is coherence bandwidth that is known as the coherence bandwidth uh, uh, this is not uh, you, you can write this as coherence bandwidth this is channel channel bandwidth this is the coherence bandwidth so uh, the, the delay spread is what so delay spread uh, yeah if the delay spread is more you will get frequency selective channel i will show you what is the uh, frequency selective channel in case how you can represent the signal so due to the time varying nature of channel or you can tell due to the mobility 
your uh, our channel will be uh, that uh, wireless channel can be divided into two types one is uh, fast fading another one is slow fading fast fading means your doppler is very high that means signal bandwidth is very small than the doppler speed slow fading means signal bandwidth is the greater than the doppler speed in time domain you will see same thing like signal bandwidth is opposite uh, is uh, inverse will be symbol time period and doppler spread is inverse will be coherence time so since signal bandwidth is greater than this you will see that if the symbol time period is less than the coherence time then you will get slow fading if the symbol period is greater than the coherence time you will get the high doppler so uh, coherence time what is the meaning of coherence time if uh, in a point of view just uh, tell you the point that coherence time the duration of time interval in which time the channel is time invariant Channel will not vary. That is the duration of the coherence time. So uh, these are the basic concept. And let me tell you what is the system model by uh, for this various type of channel dependence. So that means we have four combinations of channel. One channel can be frequency selective and fast. That means you take one combination due to the multipath, and you take one from the due to the uh, mobility due to the time varying nature of the channel. So remember that is two main things in, in wireless channel which affects our signal fade. One is due to multipath, that means due to the trans the data, the signal, the same signal will be transmitted due to multipath, it will reflex and refract and scattering, lot of paths are there. And another is due to the time varying nature of the channel or due to our mobility where the user is moving. So the basic two points. Uh, two points, two uh, points which are the basic two. These two things are affecting to our the uh, fading of uh, wireless communication. So, uh, so that means considering these things, we have four different uh, type of channel. One is frequency selective and fast. For this case, how we can represent the channel? If you have uh, a transmitted signal, let us take a transmitted signal at nth time is XN. The receive signal at nth time is yn, and uh, let us take the discrete time baseband receive signal as g of l comma n. What is meaning of this? This is the impulse response of the receive signal at lth delay and nth time. You can take the lth complex channel tab at time n. And wn I, I have taken an additive height Gaussian noise. So you will see that frequency selective and fast spreading channel case will get receive signal at n will be summation of like this. You will get. So this is you can tell the linear convolution. It is actually not linear convolution. It will be linear convolution for a particular n. Okay, it will finish the n, then you can tell that this is linear convolution. So next is frequency selective and slow fading. So the difference between fast and slow is what this channel l comma n l represents the delay and n represents the time. This channel is not depending on the time that means for a some duration of time this thing is constant so that's why i have taken here g of l so that's the difference between and frequency selective is same over here therefore the summation of due to frequency selectivity what happened our channel has multiple tabs that means they are if you take the discrete time channel we have multiple tabs that will be g l so let us as i have taken here l capital l number of uh, channel tabs that is L equal to zero to capital L minus one. So Y N will be represented for that case frequency selective slow fading like this. Similarly, frequency flat and fast fading. With this frequency flat, so you have you don't have any summation. That means it is a single tab channel. But it is fast since it is fast. At Y N, each of the receive signal at N uh, is so definitely you will see G of N. You will get that uh, channel is the single tab channel is also varying with time. So that is g of n. So frequency flat, slow fading. This is the y of n. You will get simply g into x of n. That is the g is constant. It is not varying with respect to time. So these are the four different type of channels in real time. In practice, we will get always. So uh, so basically, if we can handle the fast channel, we can select it fast fading. We will do because this is a highly complex channel because here everything is there. Fast point frequency selectivity is there. Fast fading is there. So to handle this, OTA base is a very good choice. Who, who which uh, means which uh, modulation scheme can handle this? It can handle the, all these things, all the other models, other uh, channel conditions. So OTA is a best choice to handle such type of uh, modulation, such type of uh, channel conditions.
So next point is what is mean by intercimal interference. If you see the consider only frequency selective one, that means I would like to tell you what is the negative point of frequency selective channel. Only frequency selective. Suppose you take that is slow fading, but frequency selective. You see this thing. So receive signal at mth time will be actual signal, desired signal at mth time plus something else you will get. This is the intercimal interference. So that means whenever you want to decode this x of m. So you will be that received signal will be affected by some intercimal interference. So this can be mitigated using OFDM, orthogonal frequency division uh, multiplexing. So this is a modulation scheme, or you can tell this is a multi-carrier modulation scheme, which is used uh, to mitigate the intercimal interference in the channel. So that is a, or you can tell that it is used to make the frequency selective channel to be frequency flat. So how you can do this thing? So uh, so that will be some basic points are there. This is first of all, this is a multi carrier modulation. So, what you are doing, we are dividing the data strips into multiple substrings, substrings to be transmitted different orthogonal sub channels. And here we are using orthogonal sub carriers. So, uh, why the orthogonal sub carriers will be coming? I will just tell the in mathematics point of view. We'll see, you might have studied OFDN uh, in some uh, like signal processing point of view. I will just tell in simple mathematical point of view. But in the how you are getting the concept of OFDM, uh, very easily I will just tell you. So uh, to ensure the zero ISI, so this thing has to be done. The sub-channel bandwidth should be less than the coherence bandwidth. I told you this thing that coherence bandwidth is a channel bandwidth in which channel remains flat. If the sub-channel bandwidth is less than this, so obviously we can uh, convert the frequency selective to frequency flat. So next is. If you consider that capital M number of subcarriers and B is the pass band uh, bandwidth, and then what is the each the the base band subchannel bandwidth will be B divided by capital M. And this is the subchannel bandwidth. The total bandwidth will be divided by the number of subcarriers will be the subchannel bandwidth. And this should be as I told you above that this should be smaller than the coherence bandwidth. Then only we'll get these things. And this can be done. That means you can just tell that by increasing the number of subcarriers, I will get better uh, uh, flat fading. But there is a negative point by increasing the number of subcarriers. That is also uh, you will see that there's some peak to average power ratio is there in OFDM, which will affect by increasing. You cannot uh, I cannot increase uh, and also complexity will be increased. I cannot increase the number of subcarriers as much as possible. So so to uh, to avoid the intersymbol inter interblock interference. That is an important point that is known as cyclic prefix. Cyclic prefix is used in OFDM. So this OFDM, what I am telling, this is known as specifically, specifically this is known as CP OFDM, cyclic prefixed OFDM. There is also various types of OFDM you can see. One is uh, zero, uh, zero padding OFDM. Without using cyclic prefix, you can put zero padding. But that is a lot of differences there. You can see in detail from any wireless communication book, some, uh, some book uh, related to uh, multi carrier. So you will see all these things. I am, I am just telling uh, only the point of CP OFD. So next is what is the minimum uh, length of the CP? You should choose. It should be equal to the uh, L minus one. If L is the number of channel tiers, the minimum should be equal to L minus one. Otherwise, you will not get the interblock interference. You, you cannot have, uh, mitigate the interblock interference. So, so this is the basic diagram of the transmission things how you have modulation then serial to parallel conversion then IFFT then parallel to serial then IUR cyclic prefix then you transmit it then your demodulation uh, so first point you receive the signal over here then remove the cyclic prefix then convert serial to parallel then again you do FFT this is the basic OFDM receiver then you parallel to serial, serial then you do the demodulation using any uh, whatever constellation you have used, the corresponding that demodulation de rule you have to use over here to detect the uh, received finite data stream. So next, let us see. I would like to tell you this is the main important point of uh, OFDM. Suppose you are transmitting signal S, that means over m number of subcarriers S0, S1 up to S m minus one. So the signal after First, as I told you, the transmitter you have IFFT operation, you can tell that IDFT operation. Once you do that operation, you have you can write the mathematically this is the I, this is the FFT matrix or DFT matrix F. And this is so its Hermitian will be 
and definitely you will give uh, you will get the id of the operation so this s is the vector this vector is in transmitted vector or you can tell that vector in frequency domain that means all the signals at the uh, these signals are taken from the constellation these points are the constellation symbols of oh, uh, this has been uh, the duration is m means what these signals are the uh, are the signals at each of the sub carrier so this s vector is in frequency domain c so of x is in time domain okay so then what you do the details of f i have written over here the m comma nth element of the f uh, what it what you will get the same thing you will get as your fft operation or you can tell the dft operation so i am just written this thing in matrix form so this x is in time domain okay so then so i have not done all this the operation directly i have written uh, written the receive signal in time domain with what is the relationship of receive signal in time domain after removal removal of cyclic prefix you can see that after removal of cyclic prefix before fft okay before fft what is the relationship of uh, what is the received signal with the time domain transmitted signal you see that this r vector is some circulant matrix into x vector plus noise vector this g circulant means what this you will get that this is a circulant matrix that consists of the elements that that is uh, circulant uh, matrix that consists of the channel tabs so how you can see here suppose you have capital n uh, l uh, number of channels channel tabs so you, you will get the g0 g1 up to gl minus 1 and rest of the things will be zero this is a m cross m matrix means that is how many sub carriers its, its size will be that m cross m because x is m cross 1 so you can see that this is first column second column will be what last will be zero so zero will be coming over here so g0 g1 like this so like this you will get a circulant matrix so circulant matrix will be formed this is the circulant matrix of the channel so this relationship you are getting how we are getting by incorporation of the cyclic prefix of a uh, minimum uh, duration of l minus 1 that means l minus 1 number of cyclic prefix so cyclic prefix you have to insert cyclic prefix is nothing but the last l minus 1 symbols of uh, this thing uh, whenever you are transmitting x has to be appended uh, before this uh, transmission of x then you can this is the concept of cyclic prefix you can see so the main thing our focus is on the receive signal in time domain after removal of the uh, cyclic prefix so once we do the fft operation so at the receiver so what will happen yeah so before uh, before telling this thing uh, of fft operation i would like to tell the interesting property of a circulant matrix any from the linear algebra the basic concept of the linear algebra you can find that any circular matrix can be represented as this is a idft matrix a permission into gamma this is a diagonal matrix into f this f is fft matrix or you can tell the dft matrix so this is the sbd signal singular value uh, decomposition representation of the circulant matrix so this what is gamma gamma all the elements of the gamma the diagonal elements of the gamma are nothing but fft of the of the channel tabs that means whatever channel tabs you have g0 to gl minus 1 take the fft of the channel tabs so you will get g0 to gl minus 1 you will definitely get the frequency domain in frequency domain you will get what if you take m number of sub carriers m fft to this column so you will get capital g0 to capital g m minus 1 these are the frequency that means you can tell the gk is the k sub sub channel gain that means how you will get this this you will get by the doing fft of the taking any one column the first column the first column of the circular so that thing you can put in the diagonal matrix so this is the uh, this is the representation of uh, any circulant matrix so now what we will do we will do we will apply the as i told you that receive signal over here then we have to do fft operation okay or you can tell the D dft operation once you do the fft operation so y equal to f this fft matrix into receive signal Okay, we have to do this FFT operation at the receiver. So this is in the receive signal is in frequency domain. So now you substitute that R from that previous equation that receives. Then what you get? This circulant into X plus uh, 
uh, FFT of the uh, noise vector, you will get WF. Let us let us not bother about this noise things. Let us see only focus on this. What is this part? F G circulant into X. Substitute this G circulant over here. This thing you will get simply gamma into S. So that is interesting. So that means what is S? S is the signal. That means S is the signal you are transmitted at each subcarrier. Receive the signal at you are received at each subcarrier. What is gamma? Gamma is a diagonal matrix where each of the elements of this gamma is nothing but the frequency domain representation of the channel. So if I that means this is a diagonal matrix. So hence I can represent each of the each of the uh, symbol of received signal as y k equal to g k s k plus noise. So this is the y k means what received signal at k subcarrier equals to uh, fre uh, the frequency means uh, the uh, frequency response at k subcarrier into uh, the transmitted signal at k subcarrier plus the noise at k subcarrier. See, this is how is interesting things you got by using OFDM. However, what is there is no interstitial interference if you compare this equation. This equation. So that means you got from there y k equal to some only x k plus there is nothing, no interstitial interference is there. So that is the beauty of a OFDM scenario. So that's your. Now you can very easily we can detect the. So, so in wireless communication, what is the objective? Once I get, once I get the system model. So uh, my objective is first point I have to estimate the GK. GK is related to channel. Once I get the GK, I have to estimate what signal I have transmitted. So this is so nice model that once you get the GK, you can just put any mass filter detector, or I have written here a zero forcing detector. You just have to divide this GK over this signal, you will get the estimated value of the transmitted signal. So this is very easily, this is known as single tab equalizer. As you can tell, the single tab frequency domain equalization can be done uh, by using uh, OFDM concept. But there is some negative points in OFDM concept. If the channel is highly time varying, that is an important point. As, as I told you, this circulant structure, this will be this will be valid if the channel is not time varying. The channel is slow fading for a duration of uh, for which duration we have taken the received signals. If the channel is time varying, this circulant matrix will not be there. This property, there is, you cannot get a, this circulant matrix over here. You will get something else. So since you will not get any circulant matrix, you cannot represent in this form. There will be inter, inter carrier interference, it is known as in this OED concept, not inter symbol. Because since you are taking this case of carrier, this whatever something else will come over here, that is known as inter carrier interference. So the one point is, if the channel is highly time varying, then the structure of channel matrix will no more circulate. So since the it will lose its circulate structure, see you, you will not get that nice representation of OFDM. So to meet, say so then lot of challenges will come. How to uh, how to get this multiple doctors are difficult to equalize. That is fine. That is also correct. That we cannot equalize very easily uh, the transmitter signal. So now to avoid this. So, uh, and another very uh, difficult point is channel estimation. Suppose once you estimate the channel by taking some received signals. So once you, once you detect the symbol by using that estimated channel, by that time channel has been varied. That means you have some estimated channel of previous time, but at the present time you are detecting a signal by using that estimated channel. But by this time, a channel has been already varied. So it is, you will get error, uh, more error whenever detect, uh, that means you have imperfect uh, channel. Using that imperfect channel, you are detecting some transmits. So that type of things will come for time varying. But to avoid this orthogonal time frequency space modulation scheme, we solve these problems of OFTM. And one interesting point is this OTFS will work in the delay Doppler domain. It will not work in the time frequency domain. When this wave time, whatever we are taking, all these things are in time frequency domain. That means you can represent the signals in time domain and frequency domain. But here the thing is, it would work in the delay doctor domain. So before going to the OTFS, I would like to tell that it has a lot of importance on NA, like all the 5G concepts, whatever we have. Enhanced mobile broadband, you will get this OTFS enables uh, spectral efficiency uh, by increasing the number of antennas. 
and next is internet of things you can get uh, low latency uh, communication also by using this uh, otfs another very important point is communication between vehicle to vehicle or high speed train that is very important you will get highly maximize the throughput and reliability and performance constraints another importance you can use for the millimeter wave because millimeter wave has highly carrier frequency is very high so it will be definitely it will be uh, it will be highly sensitive to the uh, time varying nature of the channel so millimeter wave with uh, otfs combination is also very much suitable uh, combination that they they can meet they can uh, overcome many challenges real time challenges so next thing is before going to the otfs i will let i would like to tell you that some point some uh, basic points that how you can represent the channel so channel can be represented as three four different ways so one is your if i i, I take the notation say tau as delay t as time f as frequency and this new as the doppler f i am taking for fourier transform sfft means symplectic finite fourier transform so this is the some notations i have taken in the full form of this sfft So, what is the uh, channel representation? How you can represent the channel? So, channel can be represented in time uh, delayed. It is this is known as the time delay or delay time. This is generally we are doing the channel. This is the time variant impulse response. Is for a transform, you will get the frequency response, time frequency response. This is uh, t. That means at each frequency and each time. What is this thing? And another representation is in delay Doppler representation. What do you mean by delay Doppler? The channel at Each each channel will definitely associated with a delay and with a Doppler. So the channel can be also represented in the format of delay and Doppler. Another format is the Doppler and frequency. So these within this uh, uh, representation of the channel, there is there is a relationship that means from year to year you will get by Fourier transform or year to year you will get by inverse Fourier transform like this. Year to year you can get the Fourier transform, but But here, in between time frequency and delay Doppler, you have to use SFFT. That is known as symplectic finite Fourier transform from time frequency to delay Doppler. But from any other things, you can get by using the simply Fourier transform. So our focus is on these two: things, time frequency and uh, and delay Doppler. Because we are using in OFDM time frequency domain, and we have to use in OTFS in the delay Doppler domain. So why delay Doppler domain? I would like to tell you. I would like to tell you why in delay Doppler domain. Just I will skip some slides. Yeah, here yeah, this is the suitable. See, in the delay Doppler domain means what? I will just tell you this diagram. You see, there is a if uh, uh, see this one, uh, this green, this car is. I am focusing on this thing. There is a transmitter over here. The signal is receiving at this one is marked by some red uh, color. So. Uh, So first thing you will see that there is a yellow line. So it has some it has some delay and some dip Doppler because all of these uh, vehicles are moving. So this is moving. Hence it has some delay and Doppler. In delay and Doppler, there is two domains. So the delay Doppler domain you can see one tab is over here. For this this case, you will see another tab is over here. For this path. This green one to to this everything every paths are being received by this yellow line to this uh, uh, this vehicle. So this will be green one will be over here one path. It has associated with some delay and Doppler. Like this blue one, so it has also associated with the delay and Doppler. Same thing you will convert into time frequency. What you will get here in delay Doppler domain, you have very few tabs. Or you can tell that delay Doppler domain channel is sparse in nature. However. You see, in the time frequency domain, you have multiple paths. Every point of the time frequency, you have paths. So that's why it is not sparse. The sparsity, due to the sparsity nature of the delay Doppler domain, it is very easy to do all the many signal processing algorithms. Another thing is, since this is not function of the time, I will tell you that from when I uh, tell you the system model, I will tell you that how it is time. This is converting into the time invariant system. Now due to this concept, let me just tell you. Uh, I am uh, at this point. Yes. So what I told you all these various type of uh, models, the channel representation. So if you are transmitting signal is S of t and your receive signal is R of t, okay. So how you can represent the receive signal? 
So S of T will be simply integration of this part. This is known as your uh, channel impulse response. That means the relationship of by using channel time varying impulse response and the transmitted signal. What is the received signal? I am not writing any noise over here. So let us not bother about the noise. We just focus on this part. So obviously noise will be there always. So R of T is integration of this thing. This you all of you know that for a particular time this is nothing but the linear convergence. So next point, I am just writing same R of T. I am not using here time time uh, varying uh, impulse response. I am using delay Doppler domain. Channel in delay. If I will use the channel representation in delay Doppler domain, the same R of T I will get by this double integration. Because since if you substitute the relationship between G T tau with uh, H tau nu by using this concept, the Fourier transform, you will definitely get that there should be double integration and something else will be coming. Over here, this integration with 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 respect to tau and delay and uh, doctor, so you will get the receive signal. Same receive signal by using the time frequency domain, I can get like this. If you substitute time frequency domain, so obviously you have to write in the frequency domain and take the inverse Fourier transform. So that's ever multiplied into the bar j to pi f t t f, and you will get the R t. So same thing this is the basic signal processing point uh, point of view I am writing. That means by using three different channel representations, I can get R T by using the transmitted signal S O. So next point, what the relationship? I, as I told you this thing, what the relationship between the time frequency and delay of the by this symplectic finite Fourier transform? This is the symplectic finite. This is the mathematical representation of symplectic finite Fourier transform. And the inverse symplectic finite Fourier transform. That means if you are to convert from time frequency to delay Doppler, that is known as symplectic finite Fourier transform. Once you convert from the delay Doppler to time frequency, that is known as the inverse symplectic finite Fourier transform. These are the basic points of OTFS. The one is advantage of OTFS is the idea is to transform the time varying multipath channel into a two-dimensional di two time invariant channel in the delay Doppler domain. So this is the point which you are converting. We are converting by using OTFS time varying channel to delay, which is time invariant delay Doppler domain. Obviously, delay Doppler domain is not depending on time; it is time invariant. So next point is in OTFS. What is one important point is used? It, it is a two-dimensional modulation scheme, which multiplexes QN information symbols, the QAM uh, constellation symbols, or whatever you take the constellation symbols in the delay Doppler domain. Instead of time frequency domain, as is done back in the OFDM scenario. Then another important point you can see from this paper, so that OTFS achieves significantly better bit rate performance. Its reliability is very good in comparison to OFDM for a scenario of 30 km to 500 km per hour in 4 GHz bandwidth. If you just see, you will get very good bit, uh, better. Uh, minimized bit, bit error rate or even uh, the maximized reliability by using OTFS instead of using OMD. So OTFS can be implemented using, th that is an important point, important advantage of OTFS. OTFS can be implemented using simple pre and post processing steps over any multi-carrier modulation scheme such as OFDM. That means if I have OFDM chip, I can also using OFDM chip, I can also design OTFS scenario by doing some pre-processing and post-processing. So that means OFDM modem can be used for, can be, that means I don't want to replace complete modem. Even if I have the OFDM modem, modem, I can get the OTFS by doing some extra processing. So that is the beauty of OTFS. So and OTFS can be also be done by separate, um, OTFS modem of OTFS can be done uh, separately also. So you, you see that this is the transmitter complete modulation and demodulation of the OTFS scenario. So how it will be started? Let us take that K, this small K represents the K uh, Doppler, L represents the LH delay. That means I have uh, signals in delay Doppler domain. That means these are the signals, two dimensional signals in, uh, these are the signals taken from the constellation. And this is you can depend in the matrix form also. This is I, this you can tell that capital H is a matrix whose kth element and lth element have been entering over here. So that means once the first step of this OTFS is you take the signals in delay of the domain, then you do the ISFFT, inverse symplectic finite Fourier transform. You convert it into the time frequency domain. 
once you get the time frequency domain your next objective is how you can write how you can convert this time frequency domain because you want to transmit the signal into a time domain in that in a single one dimensional signal is a two dimensional so you have to definitely to transmit the signal i have to uh, represent the signal in continuous domain so i have to that method is known as by heisenberg transformation then you will use the channel channel is in delay doppler domain you receive the signal once you receive the signal in continuous domain what is the next objective next objective is i have to get the signal in time frequency domain so that is done by the wigner transformation or you can tell this is the inverse of the heisenberg transformation heisenberg transformation is doing time frequency to time that means the uh, two dimensional to one dimensional wigner is doing time only time domain one dimensional continuous signal into a discrete uh, time frequency signal but these all are in the discrete domain but s of t and r of t are the uh, continuous domain once you get the time frequency signal then you have to do sfft that is known as symplectic finite fourier transform to get back the delay doppler signal now our objective is what is the relationship of y k comma l with respect to x k comma l that means in delay doppler domain the received signal in delay doppler domain how it is related with the transmitted signal in delay doppler domain that is our objective once i get that then, then I, i can apply the many uh, signal processing algorithms to detect that and transmission all these things whatever so next another so also i will show you that what is the relationship between the the receive signal in time frequency domain with the transmitted signal in time frequency domain so this part you can see this inside the dotted block this part is the structure of oft method you can see in the when you when you see the mathematical operations you will get that this part is nothing but oft so what is otfs otfs that through this part is oft this there is some pre processing there is some post processing so that the complete thing is the otfs so oft you can see that this in between part is nothing but the oft this heisenberg transformation you will see that this is nothing but a two dimensional uh here ifft is there existing within this heisenberg similarly here dft will be existing in this heisenberg so that is that's why the, i i told you that this is a this is a oft part and uh, let me tell you uh, next how what are the steps means how what is the isfft so before going to that all the steps of mathematical mathematically let me tell you the time frequency and delay doppler plane what is the meaning of these two plane so let us take a grid that is known as lambda so lambda let us take the time frequency plane at n t small n capital t let us take a uh, time duration of capital n t and bandwidth is uh, capital m delta f. okay so this is the frame uh, time frequency frame it has capital m delta f and uh, capital n t it is the uh, latency or the time uh, duration of the so that will be small n it will be very definitely discrete i am taking the discrete this is nothing but a discrete time frequency plane each of the grids this here you can see in the figure x axis in the time domain y axis in the frequency domain so each of the boxes are nothing but by varying this n and n so similarly the delay doppler domain once you convert this time frequency to delay doppler by using two dimensional uh, symplectic finite fourier transform what will get that so this thing uh, this time domain thing will be uh, you will get that 1 divided by here it will be capital nt you can see that capital nt so this will be the doppler samples you can get from here once you convert this thing this gamma this uh, this gamma will, is nothing but this value these are nothing but doppler grids delay doppler grids that means k k divided by nt so once you convert this into the sfft you will get this form k divided by nt nt is the total time duration it that means the samples this is the doppler samples because doppler inverse proportional to the time so and this is the delayed samples delay inverse proportional to the frequency m delta m. so k you, you take the very zero to capital n minus 1 that means you can tell here that you have considered n doppler bins so remember one important point is n num n is time duration n uh, that means n number of symbols is same as uh, n number of doppler bins and similarly m number of delay bins is same as here capital m delta f that means the bandwidth multiplication that means each has bandwidth the delta f each sub carrier has a bandwidth of delta f if you want to compare this thing with respect to oft that's why i'm telling so this is nothing but the 
this thing is uh, this thing you you should familiar with the OFDM concept. But this is the concept in the OTF, the delay doctor domain. So that, that's the relationship. So how this thing you are doing? The complete time duration is nt that being sampled by k k by nt. And this is known as the kth doppler. Since, since the complete bandwidth will be sampled m m that time will be take the sampling by varying the l. This is known as the lth delay. That means the delay doppler domain. That's why here I am showing the diagram. This is the concept of the time frequency with respect and the delay doppler domain. This I told you is a quantization steps. Quantization steps m delta p. So next is what are the operations? In fast operation, I told you ISFFP, how you can get the ISFFP, all the mathematical equations are here. This is a delayed upper domain and this is a time frequency domain, you will get the ISFFP operation by using this. Next is Heisenberg transform. Heisenberg transformation, so what you will do, that means you have time frequency domain, as I told you here, you have time frequency domain, you have to convert it into the, this is in two dimensional domain, you have to convert it into the uh, sing, uh, one dimensional continuous domain. So I will do that. So that is uh, so time frequency domain uh, multiplied with you have to use some pulse. That is a very important point in wireless communication. Without pulse setting, you cannot do anything. You cannot convert into the time. That means pulse setting is needed to put any bandwidth and to convert it into the uh, continuous domain. So that pulse is known as GTX, the transmitted pulse. So this has been used. That this complete thing is known as the Heisenberg transformation. Now you have transmitted continuous time waveform s of t so one then you will receive that r of t in the double this this is nothing but i told you once in the previous slides that if you have transmitted signal s of t passed through a delay of the channel how you can receive this signal so this is the received signal equation relationship with the transmitted s of t the received signal in continuous domain so next point is now our objective is continuous domain to I have to get back the discrete time frequency domain. So as you can see that here, I have continuous domain, I have to get this domain. So discrete time frequency domain. So that is the process that is you have to use, receive uh, pulse setting. Receive, that means for the, this, this is the concept is known as the mass filter type concept. That means the receive pulse setting you have to use to decode, to get this thing. So receive pulse setting is your GRX. Each complex concept has to be multiplied and you have to take integration, they will get the time frequency. This is in continuous time frequency domain. And this part, this uh, AGRX, this you can tell as the cross ambiguity function. I mean, this also you can tell as the cross ambiguity function. I will tell you what is this, why this relationship has been written. So uh, then what you do next point, you have to uh, sample, take the sample at capital NT, at M delta, then you will get what? Discrete time frequency domain signal so now the relationship i'm not uh, deriving the relationship i'm writing the simple relationship of the y n m what is the relationship of received signal in time frequency domain with the transmitter signal in time frequency domain that you can see the y n m the relationship of y n m with x n m that you can get from over here and this is a generalized relationship i have not taken any pulses any 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 single pulse i will, I will next i will tell you that by taking ideal pulse and practical pulse how this relationship can be simplified so this is a generalized relationship you can see this what is h n comma n this is a this is a uh, channel impulse channel frequency response in time frequency domain that means the channel representation in time frequency domain or you can tell the discrete time frequency domain channel in discrete time frequency domain this is h and uh, n comma m so this is in, so obviously the time frequency domain the signal so this is the time frequency representation of the channel you can represent that thing how you can uh, so by substituting all these things mathematical equation you will get this I means uh, this will be simply re replacing this equation from the previous one this is the mathematical derivation you will get uh, so this is the representation of this is the relationship that with delayed of the how you will get HNN by using the cross ambiguity functions. So next objective, that means once I got what I got now uh, time frequency domain. Next objective is I have to get the delayed operator domain. So I have to use the SFFP operation. So this is SFFP. SFFP operation is simply inverse of the ISFFP operation. So here there is, I, I don't think there is minus is not there, the plus is there. So this is, so here it will be minus. So this is the uh, time frequency domain. 
then delayed upper domain. That means the conversion of time frequency domain to delayed upper domain I have to use. This is the basic mathematics operation. So as I told you that my objective is what is the relationship of YNM and XNM and what is the relationship YK with XK? That two things are my objective. Then only I can able to the solve the all the various signal processing problems. So till now you came to know that the generalized expressions. Now by applying all these concepts, uh, I will get the what is the exact relation. So before going to that, I will tell you the what is the as I told you once again that uh, any uh, representation of delayed of the domain can be done like this. This is sparse representation of delayed of the domain. That means what? If there is p number of paths. So each of these path is associated with a gain, there is a gain, complex gain of HI or you can tell this is a Gaussian random variable, complex Gaussian random variable or you can specifically we are telling this is a circularly symmetric complex Gaussian random variable. It is associated, that means this path is associated, that means the ith path is associated with the delay of tau y and Doppler of nu y. So this is the complete representation of a delay of the channel. So where I told you all these things, which I can assume that already we are assuming this as a, uh, always we are assuming this as a Gaussian random variable or you can take the circularly symmetric Gaussian random variable since this is complex. So next is delay and Doppler. You can write the delay and Doppler in this form. By That means I want to write this delay, this is in second, in a tab. That means some integer format. Tau y can be written li divided by m delta x. So li will be nothing but the tab corresponding to the integer tab corresponding to delay tau y. Similarly, k i is the integer Doppler tab corresponding to Doppler nu y. What is this alpha? Alpha is a fractional, fractional Doppler. If you have, you cannot suppose you have some uh, Doppler is some uh, two hertz. Suppose you may not be represent this as a integer. You can get 1.4. So one one is nothing but k i. 0.4 is your fractional part. So due to this fractional, we can get many tabs, even if we can neglect also. Even if we neglect, we will get a little bit, uh, uh, there's a, there's a uh, distortion will occur. So some papers, you will see some papers are considering this fractional. Some papers are also neglecting this fractional to make easier something. But this is not a big effect. This is a very small thing. You can include fractional always. So fractional Doppler, the concept of fractional Doppler. So basically you understand that li is a uh, delay is the integer tab corresponding to delay tau y. Ky is the uh, integer tab corresponding to Doppler nu y. So next is, uh, this is the, uh, yeah, this I already told you that how uh, you have sparse representation of the, that means p number of paths, four channel tabs are here in the delayed of the domain. However, there is uh, many tabs in the time frequency domain. So this is, uh, this, is this is simply next one is simply that by, when this is moved after a delay of delta you may have something like this you may have something like this so the basically the things is what uh, we are focusing on the delay doctor domain so channel and delay doctor domain are basically sparse due to uh, due to the reason uh, the next point is as i told you the pulse shaping affects significantly on the system model so first point is using ideal pulse that means i am going back into all these relationship whatever i have done by using the exactly what pulses you are using this gtx and grx this pulses whatever the pulses you are using so let us use the first point uh, uh, ideal pulse by using the ideal pulse the cross ambiguity function this is the uh, this is the this is the cross ambiguity function between the received pulse and transmitted pulse it, you will get that uh, there is no interference from the other symbol that means it will be simply delta n into delta n one n is in time uh, m is in frequency that means there is no relation no interference from any other symbols so that is the ideal thing you will not get practical like this so for ideal cases what is happening if you substitute the if you use the ideal pulse means main equation you see over here that y n comma n that is the receive signal that is the simplified equation of this as i written over yes the time frequency domain relationship with the tra uh, transmitter receiver it is simplified with by this so see how is this simple the receive signal at nth time and mth frequency is simply the frequency uh, domain representation at nth uh, that's in the time frequency domain representation of the channel into uh, x n comma n plus whatever desired you whatever your desired time frequency signal you get 
so this is the reason why the name is orthogonal time frequency so now you can also you can represent this n comma you have considered time varying channel see you are consider you have considered time varying channel and by representing representing the time varying channel into delay doppler channel and using the ideal pulse i can get how nice is this equation y n comma m equal to h and that means that just simply it is, it is not affected by any inter symbol interference anything else so that's why this is the also similar equation you got like in the wave game it is in two dimensional that is in one dimensional no issues but it, you are getting a similar equation in the wave game also yk equal to hk into xk plus noise so that is interesting that's why its name is orthogonal time frequency domain but i have considered time varying channel but you will not get this relationship using wave game by considering the time frequency Variant channel. I have been using the idle pulse. I got the relationship. So next thing, what is the relationship of? As I told you, what is the relationship of receive signal in delay Doppler domain with the transmit signal in the delay Doppler domain? So that means what is the relationship of this thing? That means uh, what is the relationship y k with respect to with x k? So that thing uh, I am just showing here. Yes. Yes. So this equation is what the receive signal at kth Doppler and lth delay will be simply summation of h i dash x k minus this thing. This is known as a two-dimensional circular convolution. The relationship is very important. That this relationship is a delay Doppler domain. That means this is the relationship in consider the time frequency domain for idle. But interesting thing is here you have very small number of h i because this is in this part. Then this this thing is known as a Two-dimensional circular convolution. Okay. So next is by using practical pulse. If you use the ideal pulse, I, I, I told you that previously I using ideal pulse. By using the practical pulse, I am not going the detail. If you use the practical pulse, the receive signal at nth time and mth frequency will be simply this part will be there like this. The desired part will be there plus some intercarrier interference and interstimulus interference will come. These two terms will come in the time frequency domain. However. If you see that in the delay Doppler domain, practically we have using rectangular pulse. In practice, we don't have idle pulse. So idle pulse is just an idle concept. Practically, we have always practical pulse. We have to use rectangular or base course and whatever the pulses were available. So we have to use that. And the receive signal at kth Doppler and lth delay. It will be how to see the difference between the previous and now. Here hi something like this into some extra beta i k comma. So what is this? This is some phase factor. This is not not a big thing. This is just a phase factor, which you can know. It is known as the receiver. So this is just a phase factor. So that means there is no significant difference for a scenario of ideal uh, pulse effect in the relationship of delay Doppler domain with respect to the uh, practical pulse effect. The relationship with the delay Doppler domain. So hence, delay Doppler domain relationship is very useful. To uh, to do the signal processing in for OTF scenario, so no need to consider the uh, uh, the relationship in time frequency domain due to this negative point. These are the intercarrier interference will be coming for the practical cases. So another another advantage point is if you do the uh, all the signal processing algorithms in delay Doppler domain, you have a, a very important point. The channel is very few number of channel types are you have. So once you uh, so next point I will tell you. So next point is. What is the vectorized? This important point is what is the vectorized form of relationship with the transmission. That means in the delay Doppler domain, I am telling this YKL is this thing. This is the symbol by symbol relationship for signal processing or for the mathematical processing uh, by doing the text and estimates and all these things. I would like to represent the signal. Everybody would like to represent the signal in vectorized format. So what do you mean by vectorized format? That this X is nothing but the in vector form of the transmitted uh, signals in delay Doppler domain. That means suppose you have m cross n like this, x k comma l k varies from for uh, capital n zero to capital n minus one, l varies zero to m minus one. So obviously there is m n number of symbols that you can represent in vector form. So h is nothing but the channel in delay Doppler domain. Its size is m n cross m n. So how you can get the channel? That thing I have written over there. I'm not going to details mathematics, so you can see from uh, the slides also you can I can suggest some papers you can study that. So y vector. So main main thing is this y vector is in is also in the delay Doppler domain. So that means whatever relationship 
we have y k comma l. That relationship I have written in vectorized formula. This is the vectorized formulation of, and that is always we want in wireless communication for any scenario. This is this is known as your system model. Always we want the system model in wireless communication. System model means what? The relationship between input signal to the output signal. So what is the so what is the relationship between input and output? This is the vectorized. Once you get the vectorized relationship, the next point is what is the structure of this edge? That is an interesting. And remember one point: the structure of this edge is not same as your conventional OFDM technique or something else. So this is something interesting. This if you take some example, you take some example, whatever example I have taken, n equal to three. Three number of uh, Doppler beams I have taken. Four number of delay beams I have taken. This is my channel representation. I have taken one example. It's a delay Doppler channel. At delay zero, Doppler zero. I have channel tab H zero. At delay one by M delta. That means your delay tab is one. Doppler tab is one. Doppler tab is one. So delay tab is one. Doppler tab is one. So this that means the delay uh, one by delta and Doppler one by uh, N T. I have a channel H1. That means I have only two type channel, which lies. This first channel is there at at Doppler zero and delay zero. Second channel H1 is there at uh, Doppler uh, one and delay one. See, always you have to take one combination of delay and Doppler. I you cannot tell that here by looking this you have to tell what is the delay Doppler. That means this is associated with the delay zero and Doppler zero. This is associated with the delay one and Doppler one. That means delay tab, delay tab one, Doppler tab one. That means here I have only two tab channel. So I can represent that H zero comma zero means zero delay, zero Doppler. H zero H one comma one Doppler one. Also you can get the signal from uh, Doppler one and zero. Uh, if you repeat the channel, so if you take some different channel, uh, you will get also differently. So by my point is by considering this some example like this for the structure of edge if you represent by following these equations y is equal to h x plus noise you will get the structure of edge is like this you, you can simply take the structure uh, from this equation the jth row of this thing you can frame using uh, this thing you will get the structure so this structure is see you see how you get you will get suppose you have m equal to 4 you will get four number of block matrices. Each of the sides will be always n cross n. Okay, each of the sides will be n cross n. So n cross n is repeated in four four numbers, n numbers. So interesting thing is each of these matrices will be circular. A0, A3, A2, A1 will be circular. The next another interesting thing is once you get the first block matrices, next will be simply the block circular matrix. That means this A1 will be coming over here. A0 is here, A3 is here, A2 is here, A2 will be coming over here, A1 is here, A0 is here, A3 is here. This is known as a block circular structure. Another interesting point is this is a sparse. You will not get everywhere uh, non zero values. This is sparse. Hence, this, this structure of the channel in delay Doppler domain. By considering either, I have, I have uh, one important point this vectorized formulation, whatever I have done, using idle pulse, I have done this thing, analysis, using idle pulse, I have done. And the, using ideal pulse, you will get the sparse block circular structure. So here you can what is a zero? You can see here yeah, by uh, applying this thing using the previous equation, you will get this edge. So next is how we can detect the transmission signal. That means right now I have y is equal to x plus noise. I I have x as mean in x is in delay Doppler domain, y is in delay Doppler domain. In channel representations are the delay Doppler domain, and what I got that this channel is sparse block circular structure. The channel has some interesting structure which is sparse in nature and it is following some block circular structure. So, the next is uh, <coughs> next is uh, how to detect the signal. So, how to the optimal detection of the signal, uh, optimal detection of the signal is. If all of you know that maximum a posterior probability map detector. So what is this map detector? So any anything else you have received signal y transmit x and channel x. Detection you will do how? You have to maximize the probability. This is the map maximum a posterior probability probability of x transmit signal given the received signal and h. So this is known as the map detection rule. 
by vector by consider i have considered the vector so its complexity will be very high if you take if you apply this max uh, this rule this computation complexity will be very high it will be exponential in nm so which is very high so therefore nm is a already high number so its complexity will be very high so to do that next what people are doing next they are considering the symbol by symbol map detection so what symbol by symbol map detection how we can do so next you can write this thing by symbol by symbol means only symbol x sub c equal to this thing you are you that means we will we'll detect only one symbol so i am not detecting a vector one symbol from that vector so by using this probability so next point is this is a, a maximum posterior probability this is a posterior probability then applying the bayes rule i can get this in the, this probability this probability of Y given this thing and S. this you can simply see that by applying the base rule that the Q is what Q is what the probability equiprobable that means X of C assuming that all the constellation symbols are equiprobable and its probability will be one by Q so hence it will be there so Q is the number of constellation symbols and this is what I have done now this approximation I made so this made this what is this approximation is this probability of y given something this y is a vector so this y vector if you can see from this equation y this thing since this x is sparse in nature you can tell this all the elements of y are independent since all the element of y are independent this probability you can write a product of the probabilities of all the symbols they simply if the if you know that all the random variables are independent then the probability is simply the product of individual random variables so like this this concept you are following so this will be approximations why i have taken approximations because since if it is not sparse matrix this will not get at independent because everything every x has some relationship because this h all the elements all the rows of h are not different they are same actually the same elements are there the same h0 h1 will be there but since they are sparse so the first row difference and second row which elements in present in first row the are the same position you will not get elements in the second row so that's why that all the receive signals are uh, you can take the approximately they are independent hence you can write this thing so now our objective which i have to calculate this product which will give you the detection so for that i am not going to detail If you study the message passing algorithm, this is the algorithm being used to do that, which has been proposed by uh, some by one one paper. I will just show you that paper. Yeah, this paper you will study. This paper, what is they have done is they proposed the factor graph principle. This that is by that is the objective is to calculate this probability. So by and, and this is a non-linear detection method, and this will give you less computational complexity in comparison to the map detection rule. And its performance will approximately same with the map detection rule. So, what is the objective of this method is that you are, uh, uh, as I told you that uh, see, you have received signal y, okay, your transmit signal x. So, y and x there is relationship through x. That means you can uh, you can take this y as some nodes, which is known as observation node. X as some variable nodes. The relationship will be connected by using the elements in x. So, that will be considered to that concept. This has been detected. This has been uh, proposed. This method. So this is known as the message passing algorithm. Means what? What message will be passed from the? This is known as x. All the elements of x means the transmit signal. Or you can tell this is the variable nodes. That means the initially message will be passed from the receive signal to the variable node. These are the mean and variance of the interference. Then after that, at the uh, variable nodes, some probability mass function will be calculated. This has to be get back to this. Then Then what happened? Using this concept, this knowledge of all this mean, variance, probability, mass function, this this probability will be calculated. Then its maximum value will give you the transmitted signal. So that concept will be there in this paper. You can study this paper for uh, following this. So next is how to do channel estimation. What is the objective of channel estimation? So first of all, things I told you, signal detection. Signal detection means what? You know x. You don't know x. X is our signal. So next, that's I I told you one method. So next is what what is the channel estimation? Channel estimation means what? You don't know x. So initially, objective wireless communication is I have to get get the knowledge of channel. So how to do the channel estimation in delay of the domain? 
for the scenario of uh, OTFS cases. That means that is a very interesting problem. How to do channel estimation? That channel estimation will be done by putting the pilot carriers. This is a frame structure. This you can see. This is the frame structure, transmitted frame structure in delay Doppler domain. See, this axis. This is a delay. This is Doppler. Sorry, capital N is the Doppler. So zero to n minus one. This is your delay. Zero to n minus one. Then what happens? This this uh, square things are nothing but data. This star is a pilot. These are the zeros. These you have to put in a frame. For the trans for the channel estimate, this one technique has been proposed by some. You can you can also think something else. It has some negative points. I will tell you what the negative points. Negative point is what zeros are there at some time delayed of the slot. So once zeros are there, it has no use. But why zeros are there? They have put in zeros to avoid the interference from this data and pilot. You one thing is very important that whenever you are doing estimation of channel, you should know the pilot. That means the relationship will be pilot, transmitter signal, sorry, pilot, channel, and receive signal. Using that, you can estimate the channel. If at that time you will get some interference from the data, so it will be difficult to do channel estimation. So that's why that the reason is that uh, zeros they have substituted. So you can think now uh, how to uh, by uh, putting less number of zeros, even if we can avoid in zeros, how can you get the efficient? Channel estimation. So that is a uh, very interesting problem, future problem. So this, uh, the, then the next point is how many zeros you have to put. That depends on the oh, what is the maximum delay and what is the maximum Doppler. So L max is LP is some point. Any any arbitrary point you can take. What is L max? L max is the maximum the tab corresponding to the maximum delay. K max is what the tab correspond to maximum Doppler. Using this, you have to put this many this many zeros and according to that. And why then this calculation you have to find in detail from that paper. I'm just showing you some method. Then using this, you can get the channel estimation. These are the basics of channel estimation. So that means using this, you will get the channel estimation by receive signal at k divided by the pilot symbol. That means this is a LS least square channel estimation they have done. So then using this, you can do the using the estimated channel. You can apply the MP message passing detector for doing this. So next is uh, some research direction. I will tell before going to research direction. I will tell you some points on detection. Some uh, some of our research on the detection. So see, this is a method of by using message passing algorithm. So what you, you can see that uh, by using message passing algorithm, we are getting the uh, approximate of uh, 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 approximate uh, uh, performance of map detection rule. Okay, we are getting approximate performance of map detection rule uh, and with less computation complexity. And another important point is this message passing detector is a non linear detector. So, to uh, we have proposed one linear detector. Uh, so, next uh, we can see some problem that we have proposed a linear detector uh, which will give the less computational complexity in comparison to the message passing algorithm with also giving the similar performance as that of the message passing algorithm. So that thing you can just see the linear detector is, I am just showing the uh, linear detector. Uh, yeah, this one. You can see this paper, low complexity, zero forcing in MMS receivers for MIMO OTFS system with imperfect channel state information. And this paper, what we have done is this paper you can study from uh, it is there in Google Scholar. It has been submitted in one uh, one journal, so one transaction. So we'll just see. So, but right now it is there in our uh, archive. So you can just see this paper. In this paper, one interesting structure of channel I told you already that uh, what is the structure of H? That H structure is is a, a block circular, sparse block circular. By exploiting this structure, what we have designed, we have designed a low complexity. You can just see here, we have designed a low complexity channel estimation, low complexity detection technique. So by exploiting this structure, so this is the main fundamental of by exploiting this structure, how we can design the low complexity uh, uh, detector. So that you can see the performance, I will show you some performance, uh, some uh, Simulation results you can see. 
yes so low complexity yes low complexity uh, here let me tell you yes is correct you can see here how uh, relationship with message passing it will be there i think uh, message passing where is the message passing okay these are the beta rate performance of uh, yes low complexity zero forcing this we have done for perfect channel state information and imperfect channel state information you can see that the beta rate is how uh, it is very less beta rate you will get but uh, once i will show you that comparison yes 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 here yes, yes you see here so this is message passing this black one is a message passing algorithm we have done four plus for minus system this black one is a message passing algorithm this one is low complexity so what we have done is the low complexity zero forcing we have uh, put it some uh, more uh, technique over here low complexity uh, this is low complexity zero forcing with one detection scheme so it is coming uh, not closer to message passing however see low complexity mmsc this mmsc you can see here low complexity mmsc is little bit better for the snr of 5 to 10 within this range low snr region you can see low snr region the red one is giving the better result than the message passing and once i will apply the las this is a uh, detection scheme uh, after low low complexity multiple mmsc Algorithm. So the low complexity MMS receiver. With that, if I incorporate this, even if after that you will get uh, less computational complexity than the message passing algorithm. But you can see here the beta rate is very less than this. So this is a good paper you can follow to if you, if you want to do the detection type of uh, work, uh, what to design of low complexity detection. So, so that is a algorithm we have been proposed over here. So this I will I just uh, told you about this. Okay. So next is, uh, if you can see, so next, uh, finally, I just tell you some points. Uh, yeah, these are the some basic things. As uh, we, uh, one is development of spectral efficient channel estimates method for OTFS. As I told you that, uh, since zeros are there, I told you that zeros are there uh, in the uh, frame structure. So it will uh, affect significant with the spectral efficiency. It will make uh, spectral inefficient. To improve spectral efficiently, we can think something more uh, to, uh, for the channel estimation. Next one is also you can incorporate millimeter wave. Next, next one is development of linear detector uh, having low computation complexity of MIMO multi-user MIMO TF. This work we have done something and also some part uh, you people can do. There's a lot of uh, maybe you can design something more that low computation complexity. So then another point is yeah, it is one. Uh, Things that people are doing right now, NOMA with OTFS also that people are doing. And something more I can tell you that uh, OTFS, uh, yeah, NOMA added OTFS is there, some research work is going on. And another uh, is that uh, um, mostly, huh, you can think massive MIMO OTFS that I have not included over here, massive MIMO with OTFS. It has some lot of challenging tasks actually. Uh, massive MIMO, what I mean, so many, uh, uh, Antennas are there in the base station, so it has a lot of problem uh, when framing with OTFS. So another one is some uh, PAPR reduction schemes you can also propose because OTFS similar to AFDM, it can have some PAPR uh, will be very high for this case. You can also think some how to uh, propose some PAPR reduction techniques for this OTFS. These are some basic uh, research directions and also uh, many other research directions will be there in terms of the power allocation like in NOMA added OTFS, some the people are doing some power allocation and detection schemes for the multi-user scenario, it will become now multi-user scenario, so how to detect. So all these uh, things you can uh, see from the papers, you can study um, various research uh, directions are there. Okay, fine. Uh, so these are the some basic references you can study. To start this thing, you have to, my suggestion is you have to study uh, this paper, third one. Third one and uh, and the first one. This is a very basic paper to start the research. And uh, after that, you can uh, what directions you can go, and also you can study our paper, whatever paper I have shown. Okay, thank you for this. Thank you very much, sir, for the nice okay. session. It was really very much informative. Okay, thank Dear you. participants, please post your queries in the chat box, or you may ask by unmute yourself. If you have any query, sir is open for you. 
Thank you, Mahesh sir. Really, session is very informative. Okay, thank you. So you got a lot of things, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Any queries, dear participants? I think all doubts are clear by your presentation, sir. <laughs> so please uh, stop your screen share so we can take a group photograph. Okay, okay. I'm just stopping. Done. Some people Thank may you. not be. Some people may not be understand the session. Also, may not be understand detail. A lot of backgrounds are needed for this process. I'm. I'm sure that some people may not maybe understand something, but a uh, lot of backgrounds are needed to understand this. Thank you so much, dear participants. We'll meet at sharp 2 p.m. for the next and last session on second day of this STTP. Till now, thank you so much.